who's excited to be here at the U tonight? Man, let me hear it. And I want to encourage you with this. We say this all the time, but God's not done. I know a lot of times we view worship as, man, that's, that's the, the part of the worship experience where God can move. And then we kind of just sit back in our seats like we're watching another TV show, right? But I want you to know this. Your faith is important. Your expectation is important that God can move only when we put our faith out there and we expect him to move. So if you're sitting out there like you're kicking back watching another TV show, what are you going to get? essentially what you're going to get. But if you believe God's going to speak uh, to you, that God can lead whoever's up here, whether it's myself, Josh, Pastor Mike, um, whoever's up here, God can speak through the preacher and get you exactly what you need to hear. I remember a while back, uh, my mom had invited one of her friends out to main church. And this is someone who had gone from relationship to relationship, essentially marriage to marriage, and just like all this crazy relationship, uh, relationship stuff. And, uh, the pastor that was up there, I was one of our uh, associate pastors. He started talking about people who go from one marriage to another to another. And she was like taken back by it. She was like shaken because she's like, how could he know? And she literally looked at my mom and said, you told, you told him. And my mom's like, no, like I, I never, I, I didn't tell him anything, but she was convinced my mom had said something. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was speaking through who was up here and it wasn't in his notes. He didn't mean to say any of it, but God gave the preacher the right words to say. So I want you to know whether you're out here and you're, you're far from God or maybe you've been here for the past 10 years, I want you to know God can speak to you tonight. Not saying I'm anything special. Um, the Bible talks about God speaking through a donkey. So it doesn't even matter if I'm special or not, but God can use me tonight if your faith is out there. And I believe what we talk about tonight can radically change your life. Amen. Do you believe it? Is your faith out there? Are you expecting that God's going to move tonight? So we're in this series called Signs. Everyone say signs. signs. We're in this series called Signs. And if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Mark chapter 16, uh, starting in verse 15. Mark chapter 16, starting in verse 15. And uh, it won't be up on the screens. So uh, make sure you're following along. And side note, guys, we just started doing this new thing here the other week where if you don't have a Bible, if you don't have a Bible, we'd love to get a Bible to you. So we got some of our team members that are gonna be walking around. So if you want a Bible tonight, maybe you left your Bible at home, maybe you left it in the car, maybe your dog ate your Bible, I don't know. But maybe you, you just need a Bible tonight and you wanna follow along, lift your hand right now, lift your hand and our ushers will be glad to let you use one of ours. And man, we wanna hook you up. And if you don't have a Bible, take that thing home with you. If you have one, you can leave it on your seat and we'll collect them after service. But if you don't have one, let us bless you with that and let us sow into your life because God's word is so important. And it's so important you follow along and you see it for yourself. Because I want you to know, any preacher can make up anything, but when you see it in God's word, Word, that's what changes lives. When you see it in God's word, that's what can't be shaken. If you build your life on a good message, you're like, hey, so-and-so, they did a good TED talk. I want you to know when times get tough, you're going to be shaken. But if you build your life on God's word, when tough, time come, tough times come, the Bible says that you're not going to be shaken. You're going to be standing firm like a house built on a rock. So guys, again, if you want a Bible, lift your hand up or I'll show get one to you. But Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 16, starting in verse 15, Jesus is talking Uh, And he says this, he says, and then he said to them, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. Anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. Uh, These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. Uh, Matthew chapter nine, verse 36. And you guys can uh, turn there too, or you can follow us on the screens. But it says this, it says, talking about Jesus again, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who's in charge of the harvest and ask him to send more workers into the fields. It says he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. And I want you to know that's the heart of God. When he sees people, he doesn't look at them uh, with a judgmental heart. He's not looking down on them saying, hey, I can't believe you did that. But he's looking with a heart of compassion. And you might feel like you're far from God tonight. You might feel like you've messed up with everything in the book. But I want you to know, God loves you so much, and he's looking at you with a heart of compassion, okay? So if you're taking notes, the title of tonight's message is simply this. What's the point? What's the point? Turn to your neighbor and say that. Say, what's the point? (laughs) Say it with a little more passion. Like, you're frustrated. Like, you're ticked. Like, what's the point? Nelson, what's the point? And if you're writing writing it down, maybe put a couple question marks um, just for emphasis. What's the point? Come on. Chancy, what's the point? For real. I'm just messing with you. Anyways, let's pray and we'll get started. Father, right now, we just pray that you move in a mighty way tonight. We thank you so much for everything you've done. 
We thank you for everything you're about to do. I pray that you just speak through me, that you challenge us, you change us from the inside out by your word. In Jesus' name, amen. What's the point? What's the point? I like that. You said Jesus. Amen, brother. That's good. That's a good word. What's the point? What's the point? <laughs> Anyone ever like thought that? Just about life in general. What's the point? Or maybe you thought a thought like this. What's the meaning of life? Like, why am I here? What's the point of me existing? Am I here just taking up space? Um, is there a point? Well, what's the point? I, I think, if, again, if you're like me, you've thought that thought before. What's the point? What's the point? Uh, anyone ever thought that before? I think everyone's wondering. In fact, I asked Siri this the other day. And I want you to know Siri was actually wondering the same thing too. Siri, what's the point? Siri, what's the meaning of life? This is awkward. <laughs> Siri, what's the meaning of life? 42. 42. I don't even know what that means. But here's the deal. Even Siri is trying to figure out the meaning of life. I think if you go to the world, the world is trying to figure out the meaning of life. And they all say so, all sorts of crazy stuff. I mean, never go to the world to figure out why you're here on this earth, okay? Because they're trying to figure it out too. They're trying to figure it out with, without God, and uh, that just makes a mess of things. But people in the world, they'll say, say things like this. Like, man, you're just here to have fun. You're just here, like, you only live once. Anyone remember the old YOLO? <laughs> you only live once, so you might as well party it up. Have as much fun as you can, because once you're gone, you're gone. But I want you to know this. Is that what God says? God wants you to have fun. He wants you to enjoy life. He doesn't want you to uh, be a part of the sinful things of life. But I believe living for God is the most fun you could ever have. It's the most enjoyable life. But is that the point? Are we here just to have fun? I'm just having a good time. Like, is that the point to life? We hear things like, okay, the American dream. I want to go to school. I want to get a good job. I want to get a good car, get a good wife, get a good, ever. you know, it's just like have a kid's white picket fence, all those things. Is that the meaning of life? What's the deal with a white picket fence? Why does everyone want one? Like I never understand. White picket fences are so overrated. <laughs> but I want you to know this. Is that the meaning of life? Get a good car, get a good job, make a lot of money. Is that the meaning of life? The world will tell you, yeah. Uh, people will say this. Okay, the meaning of life is, and this is really deep. They'll say things like, it's nothing. You're just here, you're taking up space. This whole thing started, this whole cosmic uh, thing started by accident and you're just here taking up space. And the moment you die, you're gonna be buried in the ground, bro. And it's gonna be pitch black, bro. And there's just gonna be a bunch of nothing, bro. That once you didn't know, that's depressing. But what does God's word say the meaning of life is? I believe this. I believe that each and every one of us have a divine purpose and a divine call on our life. That there's something you can do that only you can do. That there's giftings and talents put on the inside of you that only, only you have. And there's people you're called to reach that only you can reach. Do you know that? Do you believe that? The Bible says over in the book of Psalms that every single one of your days was written out before you lived a single one of them. God wrote your biography before you even breathed your first breath. Isn't that crazy? God loves you that much. But I think a lot of times we struggle with thinking we have value to God. We think there's so many billions of people on this planet. How can I have value to God? Well, if God created the whole universe, but just speak in a couple words, if God always existed, always will exist, we can't even fathom his greatness. He can do whatever he wants. Do you believe he has the power and the ability being able to do whatever he wants? Does he have the power and ability to think about you? in just you? All the while thinking about every other person alive on this planet? Yeah. If we serve a God who's limitless, and with his limitless power, he chooses to think about each and every one of us individually, that's incredible. And he did that. He wrote a book with every single one of your days before you lived one. That's, that's amazing. And how do we find out what that is? I mean, I believe that seeking him is the only way to figure it out. Asking God, hey, here's my life. Uh, what do you wanna do through me? What do you wanna do in me? We actually have a series online. If you wanna check it out, I don't have time to get into all this tonight, but we called it Seasons. It's from a couple of years ago. But we talk about what it looks like to find out what God's called you to do. So if that's you and you're like, I wanna figure this out, I wanna find out what this looks like, go check us out. You can look for us on YouTube. Search for the you and uh, check out that se uh, series called Seasons and I believe it'll really help you. But I believe not only do each and every one of us have an individual call on our life, there's something only you can do, but I believe all of us are here for one reason. All of us are called to do one same thing on this planet. We all exist, we all are taking up space, we're all breathing oxygen every single day. Why? One thing. Turn to your neighbor and say, what's the point? 
get, say it with a little more, say it kind of sassy. Like, what's, what's the point? And I think if you listen just deep in your heart, you know you're created with greatness. I'm not tell, saying what people have told you, because sometimes people, just like pollution, you know, can get into your heart. We can have um, pollution in our heart of things people have told us. And it, it kind of filters the way we see things. But if you really get quiet, listen to your heart, you know you've been built with greatness. And what happens? We fail a couple times in life and we start lowering our expectations. Never lower your expectations because expectation, um, when you have your expectations on God, that's essentially another word for faith. When you put your expectations on God, don't lower those expectations because you're created with greatness. I believe there's people in this room that are called to start businesses. I believe there's people in this room that are called to be musicians. Side note, we have an interest meeting after service. If you want to get involved on our music team, check it out. It's going to be in the choir. Man, I believe you have a call on your life. I believe some people in this room, maybe you're called to be an actor, actress. That's kind of crazy, right? Maybe you're called to, to uh, write a book that's going to be one of the New York Times bestsellers. And you could be like, what? Devin, not me, not me. But I believe you got greatness on the inside of you. And it's not all about you. It's about what God can do through you. In fact, the Bible says this. It says over in the book of 1 Corinthians, it says, God chooses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. The word foolish in the Greek is actually this Greek word moreno, which is where we get the, our English word moron from. So if anyone's ever looked at you and said, hey, you're a moron. Brandon, you're a moron. You know, no, nah, just, just kidding. I love you, Brandon. You're not a moron. But if someone ever looked at you and said that, you need to say thank you very much because God chooses the people the world looks at and calls morons to change this world. God causes the foolish things to change this world. God causes the, the people that people say are not good enough, that don't have what it takes, that aren't good looking enough, that, that aren't strong enough, that aren't this or that. God chooses those people to change the world. I love the story of Steve Jobs. Do you know he was put up for adoption? He dropped out of school and then he changed the world. Man, his real parents didn't even want him. Man, he tried in school, he failed. And dude, he probably single-handedly changed this whole planet by the things he invented, the things he did. If people look at you and tell you you're not good enough, you need to say thank you very much because those are the people God uses to change this world. Why? Because at the end of the day, you can't take credit for it. When people say, hey, great job, you can't say, thank you. I know I'm pretty good. No, all you can say is, hey, I don't know how that happened, had to be God because you know you're not good enough in and of yourself that God had to have showed up God had to have worked through you I believe that each and every one of us needs to have a God-sized dream that's destined to fail without divine intervention man I believe that you need to have a God-sized dream a God-sized vision on the inside of you and if you can accomplish it in and of yourself you're not dreaming big enough you're not you're not expecting from God big enough none of that was in my notes guys I'm sorry but here's the deal here's the deal again say what's the point I believe a lot of us in life have forgotten the point. Or maybe we don't know the point. There's, a point. there's something we're all called to do. There's the meaning of life for all of us. The reason we're all on this planet. The reason we all exist. And I'm going to get into it tonight. If you ever wonder what the meaning of life is, you're going to find out by the end of the night. Isn't that exciting? I thought so. <laughs> Anyone like to go to the mall? If you guys are like, he's going to tell me the meaning of life. And he's going to talk about the mall. This is a wild night. Anyone like the mall? Let me see a show of hands. Anyone growing up love the mall? Like you're a teenager. That is the thing to do when you're growing up. You know, like you're like 14. You call up your friend. You're like, hey, Billy. Yeah. You know, if you want to, if you can get your homework done early, my mom will take us down to the mall. And Billy's like, oh, shoot. I'm going to hurry up my math. I'm coming right over. He rides his bike over. Uh, your mom takes you guys over the mall. And it's just, it's awesome, right? I want to be honest right now. Maybe it's just the stage of life I'm in. I try to spend the least amount of time in the mall as possible. (laughs) But here's the deal. When I go to the mall, I want to make it count. Here's what I mean. Some of you know what I'm talking about in a second. I walk in the mall. Go in the food court. I got two choices. Do I walk on the right side? Do I walk on the left side? I walk on the left side. Why? Two words. Two heavenly words. Free samples. I love free samples. Dude, you guys, it was like worship was like up here, and I said free samples, and it was also up here. I love the energy in this room tonight. Man, let's try it again. Free samples. Free samples. 
Dude, this is awesome. So I go, in, you know, you got to stay to the left side, okay? You got to stay to the left side. Right side, they don't do anything. Um, they got good food. They probably, that's probably why they don't do anything. They still have people coming over. Left side, they need, to, they need to get your attention. They got to bring you over. So they got all these samples. And if you play your cards right, by the end of that train of free samples, you pretty much got yourself a free meal. So I, I remember I, I walk in this one specific day. I used to go there all the time. I walk in, you know, walking through the mall, doing my thing, go up, get my first sample, first place. You know, and then I go to, I, I pass the next door. They got their samples. Yeah, I'll take that too. Keep walking. Get to the, the third one, stir fry. Stir fry. Anyone like stir fry 88? Isn't it amazing? Like, it's so good. You take a bite of it. You feel like you're in heaven. Then you look at the chicken and it's like, looks like a mashed potato on the inside. And you're like, I don't know if that's real meat, but you don't care. You don't care. Why? Because it tastes so good. So this is the most important stop for me. Stir fry's got a special place in my heart because it just tastes so good. So again, I go to the first place, get my free sample. Go to the second place, get my free sample. Third place, I stop. Well, there's this lady working. She's like, you know, a little bit older. And she looks at me and she does not look happy. She looks at me with this angry look. And I go, hey, how's it going? I go take a free sample. And she goes, no. I'm like, well, what is happening? Uh, Is everything okay? And she's like, you're not getting a sample. And I go, what, what, what do you mean? Like, is everything okay? And she goes, you already got one. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, ma'am, I'm sorry. I literally just walked in the store. There must have been someone else that came up with dashingly good looks. And you might have just be mistaken him for me. And then she goes, she goes, looks me up and down again. No. You're not getting one. You, you literally already got one. And I look at her and I'm like, ma'am, I, I literally just came in those doors. That wasn't me. And she looks at me again. <laughs> no sample. So at this point, I'm like completely blown away by this. And I actually, like, I don't even care about the sample at this point. I'm just trying to prove my innocence that I'm not trying to just play the system to get a free, free sample. But I look at her, I'm like, ma'am, listen, I promise you, I just came in those doors. I'm not trying to steal a sample. She looks at me again and goes, no, no sample. And she looks at the guy behind the counter for affirmation to back her up. Because obviously if I was here, he would have seen me too. She looks behind the counter. You know what he says? He looks at me, looks me up and down. He goes, free sample. So this point, like she looks at me, do not take it. She's like with her eyes telling me, do not take that sample. So she's glaring at me. He's like with a big smile. I'm in the middle, like mom and dad are fighting and I don't know who to pick. Uh, it was awful. So I remember walking away from that instant saying, I'm not going back there. Why? Because the way I was treated. Let me ask you this question. Why is she out there? Why is she giving out free samples? And that sounds like I got problems, right? I promise you, I, there's a point behind this that's gonna sink in in a second. But why, is, why does she give out free samples, okay? One reason, to get people to come over and get people to spend money. She got confused along the way and thought the point of her being there was the samples. The point was not the samples. The point was the people she was called to reach with the samples. And I believe a lot of us as Jesus followers get so caught up with the samples, like with what we're doing, with all this other stuff. But at the end of the day, it's all about the people we're called to reach. It's all about the people who you work with, the people that you go to school with that are far from God. She forgot along the line. It was all about people. She thought it was all about the sample. And it was funny, a couple months later, I end up going there and I, uh, I see her. Actually, I'm walking. I try to avoid eye contact, you know, because <laughs> I hadn't been there since then. But all of a sudden, I hear this voice. Hey, hey, you. I'm like, look over there. She's waving me down. So I run over. I'm like, hey, how's it going? And I've only had one conversation with this lady. And that was that the one. And she looks at me. She's like, so how you been? I miss seeing you. We're, we're like, what's going on? I think she felt bad. So I just, I'm like, yeah, you know. I've been busy, I've had stuff going on. It sounds like a bad breakup, like <laughs> just ran to an ex. And she says, she says this, she's like, well, actually, I'll say this. She said two words and it won me back over. She goes, free sample? 
And that's what won me back over. And I want you to know this, that she finally realized it was all about people. It wasn't about trying to keep all the samples to yourself, but it was about the people that she was called to reach and bring up to the counter to get them to spend money. But I want you to know this, that so many times we get caught up with all these things, the to-dos, the to-don'ts. But I want you to know at the end of the day, it's all about Jesus loves those that you're close to that are far from God. Who has God put in your life that's far from him, but's close to you? God's calling you to make an impact and an influence in their life. Don't get so caught up with a sample. Don't get so caught up with all this other stuff. The white picket fence, the house, all that stuff, having fun through, enjoying life. That's all great. But what's the main point? Everyone say, what's the point? The point is people. The point is the people we're called to reach. The point is the people that are in our lives that we're called to invite out to the U next week. The point is the people that are in our life that we're called to invite to Easter this Sunday. We got an amazing Easter service coming up where we're gonna share the gospel. We know that that, uh, statistically, most people come out to church on Christmas and Easter. You know, you put on your big hat and you come to church on Easter. That's just what you do. But we strategically plan our Easter service with that in mind, knowing there's gonna be a lot of people coming that don't know God. So we're going to do a lot of things to break down those walls in people's hearts, and then we're going to share the gospel with them. The message is going to be tailored to, hey, if you don't know Jesus, you can right now because he loves you. He died for you. He's got a plan for your life. That's what it's going to be about. And we always try to tailor our messages towards that, but that specifically is going to be tailored towards people who are coming out that don't know God. we got an event coming up called Echo. Anyone excited for Echo? That's the whole point of that night. We want to provide an atmosphere where you can bring your friends out and they can hear about Jesus and their lives can be changed forever. But I want you to ask yourself this, who in my life is close to me, but far from God? Acts chapter three, if you guys have your Bibles, turn there. Acts chapter three, starting in verse three. It says this, it says, Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth Uh, was being carried there. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from people when going into the temple. I want you to get this picture. Every single day, this paralyzed man, his friends take him and they lay him beside the temple. Why? So he can beg for money, beg for food, because he's lame. He can't work. He's paralyzed. And they set him by this gate called beautiful. And I've always read that and wondered, why is it called beautiful? Like, what does that even mean? Like, why call a gate beautiful? Like, have you ever wondered that? You're like, that's a weird line in the Bible. (laughs) But I want you to know there's no line in the Bible that's by accident. That God's word was spoken, you know, people wrote it, but God spoke it to them by his spirit. So there's nothing in in your Bible by accident. But I used to wonder that. Why is that called beautiful? And that word beautiful in the Greek language is actually, it could be translated like this. It will happen at the right time in the right season. It will happen in the right time, in the right season. And it could also be translated beautiful. That is a good translation too. But when you put those two translations together, what does it mean? It means it will become beautiful in the right season. And it paints this picture of a fruit. You know when a fruit is, is um, ripening? You eat that, that fruit, that banana, whatever. You eat it too soon. It's, what is it? It's tart. It doesn't taste good. But you wait for the right time. You're patient. And at the right time, that thing's going to be ripe. And it's It's beautiful in the right season. And I've heard people preach messages like, hey, you never know when God's gonna move. It'll happen at the right season. Um, You never know when God's gonna heal you. It'll happen at the right season. Um, No, I want you to know this, that God wants to heal you right now. God wants to set you free right now. Faith is not the future. Faith is right now. Faith says, I believe I receive it. Faith calls things that are not as though they are. It's different when you're believing, hey, God, uh, what am I called to do with my life? Get me into the, the, the career I'm called to be in. There's time and there's a waiting period with that. But if you're believing for healing, freedom, to be set free, I want you to know it's God's will that happens right now. Yeah. It doesn't mean you're going to pray a prayer and all of a sudden, boop, oh, <laughs> I feel a difference. I mean, it might, it might. But even if you pray and you don't feel a difference, you need to keep the switch of faith turned on. And again, faith calls things that are not as though they are. And you need to be in faith that, hey, God's working in my life. Whether I see it, whether I feel it, I walk by faith, not by sight. Uh, you could say it like this, I walk by faith and not by my five senses. So I want you to know though, like faith is now. Faith is now. So this says, it's, it's, it calls this gate beautiful. It'll happen at the right time in the right season. It'll be beautiful in the right season. Paints a picture of that, that uh, fruit ripening. And what it means in context here, see, all throughout the ages, it wasn't the right season. Jesus had not died on the cross. He hadn't resurrected. He hadn't take, the Bible says he took stripes so we could be healed. That hadn't happened yet. 
This is chapter three in Acts. Literally, this is right on the scene of everything starting to change. And the Bible says this was the right season. Why? Because Jesus had just risen from the dead. We're still in the right season. I want you to know your coworkers, the, the people you, you go to school with, it's the right season for God to move in their life. Why? Because we're still under this age of grace that Jesus is still moving on this earth and he's moving through you. I love it. Someone said it like this, when God wants to move on this earth, what does he do? He taps you on the shoulder and says, let's do it together. He doesn't say, hey, get out there, Gary, go figure it out on your own. But he says, Gary, let's go do this together. Man, that's what God does. God's not gonna move most likely unless he moves through you. And there's instances where he can, um, but most of the time he chooses to move through people and not you by yourself, but you with him. But it's, it's this period in time. Jesus just died, rose from the dead. Uh, he just had died for everyone's sins. He just took stripes so that you could be healed. So it's the right time. It's the beautiful time that this has happened at the right season. So Peter and John see this guy starting in verse, uh, verse three. It says, when he saw, talking about the, the lame man, he saw Peter and John about to enter. He asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold with you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand, helped him up, and as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. Come on, somebody. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. That's crazy, right? Does he stop, stop there? Does he just kind of sit back down? No, the next verse says, then walking, leaping, praising God, he walked into the temple with them. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. Verse 10 says, when they realized he was the lame beggar, they said uh, they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colonnade where the people were holding tightly to Peter and John. Peter saw his opportunity and addressed the crowd. People of Israel, he said, what is so surprising about this? And why stare at us as though we had made this man walk by our own power or godliness? And I think that last part is so important. Peter's saying, hey, why do you look at me like I did this out of my own power? Like, why are you looking at me like I'm something special, like I did this with Peter power? It's not about that. It's not about you being so great in and of yourself. It's not all about, you know, I got my special Gary power. I got my Jamie power. No, it's about God's power working through you. And he even says, it's not by my own godliness. It's not about me doing all the right things, crossing all the T's, dotting the I's. I believe you should live godly. But if you messed up, I believe God still wants to work through you. He wants you to come to him, repent. But he's not looking for you to be perfect to use you. Again, God calls the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. So if you feel like you're not good enough, congratulations. You're the exact person God wants to use. God uses the two, two guys who are ordinary guys Remember, Peter just portrayed Jesus a couple chapters before. Jesus literally, literally had to physically appear to Peter because Peter was so beat up on the inside because of it. And now God's using them to, to perform this miracle. But I think it's very interesting. They pray for this guy. Get the picture. This lame man, this paralyzed man. They pray for him, okay? All of a sudden, he starts walking. He starts walking. And the Bible says, not only does he start walking, but he starts jumping and he's leaping. I don't know why there's a difference between jumping and leaping. I think leaping's probably more like, hey, you know, like doing the, like the, the, the leprechaun thing. So he's like doing all that. And he starts dancing. You know, he's doing the jig. He's just so excited. He's, he was paralyzed a second ago. And now he's healed. So he's jumping. He's leaping. He's, he's jumping up and down. He's dancing. He's doing everything he can. Why? Because he was just set free. In the next verse, it says they walk into the temple. And he's kind of like leaning on Peter at this point. And I read that and I was like, man, God, why is he leaning on Peter? Like, did he start to lose his healing? Like, what's going on? And I felt like God rose this up on the inside of me. Do you ever like, you know, you're just like playing basketball or doing something crazy and you're just like worn out because you were just jumping so much. But I believe this guy was so excited. He was jumping up and down so much. He was dancing so much. He just, he was a little worn out. So the Bible says he's like leaning on them because he just like danced his heart out because he was just healed. So people see him. I mean, he's not like, he still can walk, so obviously the miracle is still working. So people start seeing him, and they're like, hey, did you see who's over there? Yeah, that's, uh, that's Jimmy. Jimmy? Jimmy? No, he's paralyzed. That can't be Jimmy. No, 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 that's Jimmy. Like, I, he, he's, he's jumping, he's leaping. Oh, he's, he's praising God. What, did, he, seriously, Jimmy, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, that was Jimmy. And man, word starts spreading. And all these people start coming. And when you read it, you get this picture. You're like, man, there must have been like 50, 60 people showing up. There, there's a lot of people. But really, uh, most scholars will agree. 
There's a couple thousand people that show up. Everyone in the temple starts spreading word. Hey, Jimmy's healed. Jimmy's dancing. No, not Jimmy. Jimmy's paralyzed. No, bro. Jimmy's, Jimmy's dancing. Are you sure? Yeah, get over here. Get your TikTok out. We got to record this. This is crazy. So everyone comes. There's like thousands of people and they're all gathered around and they're watching Jimmy walking totally healed. And Peter and John, it says they saw the opportunity. And most people would have thought like this. And this is what I want to hone in right now. Most people would have been like, man, I'm trying to preach the gospel to Jimmy. And all these people show up. You're in a crowd and you can't hear yourself think, and you're trying to talk to someone, and you can't because there's so many people crowded around you. Definitely wasn't COVID friendly. Uh, but they're trying to talk to him, and I'm sure they can't, they can't hear themselves think. And most people would think, man, these guys, they won't leave us alone. I have this opportunity from God right here. And all these people are messing it up. But in reality, was this Peter's opportunity? Yeah. But all of this was Peter's opportunity because he looks around and there's thousands of people gathered. I mean, never look at people as an obstacle. I think COVID season has made us view people as obstacles more than ever. Well, you go to the grocery store. There's one person in that aisle. You want to get a loaf of bread and you know, there's like that lady just standing there. She looks back at you with that angry look like, don't you dare? Five feet, buddy. And she like kind of gives you that, that scowl like the lockdown stare down. But what, what happens is, you know, you start seeing people as obstacles. You start seeing people as obstacles everywhere you go. I remember when everything first happened, I was trying to get in and out of Giant Eagle as fast as I could because I didn't want to talk to anyone. But if you're not careful, you see people as obstacles, the people you work with, the people you go to school with, and you just try to stay the heck away from everyone. But I want you to know this. There's people in your life that only you can reach. Who in your life is close to you but far from God? Never see people as obstacles, but see them as opportunities. Peter didn't see, you know, thousands of people are gathering. He didn't see that as an obstacle, but he saw it as an opportunity. What if the thing you're viewing as an obstacle? Maybe it's your job. Maybe it's school. Maybe your people are treating you bad. Maybe people are talking behind your back. Maybe that's an opportunity from God to love them and show them the love of Jesus through you. Number two, amen. Uh, number two, we need to overcome persecution. Overcome persecution. What I mean by that is uh, chapter four, four, verse one. It says, while Peter and John were speaking to the people, they were confronted by the priest, the captain, the temple guard, and some of the Sadducees. Uh, these leaders were very disturbed with Peter and John that they were teaching people that through Jesus, there's a resurrection of the dead. They were ticked. They were TO'd. Uh, they arrested them, and since it was already evening, uh, put them in jail until the morning. But many of the people who heard their message believed. So the number of men believed and now totaled 5,000. That's how I know there were over a couple thousand people there because 5,000 people now believed in Jesus because these two guys saw the opportunity in front of them. They didn't shrink back in fear, but they saw the opportunity. 13, verse 13 says, the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. So these are ordinary guys. But what stood out to them the most? The fact that they had been with Jesus. Being with Jesus is what changes everything. You don't have to be all that qualified. You don't need to have it all put together, but you do have to be with Jesus. Again, God chooses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. If you feel like you're not good enough, God wants to use you. But what's the defining factor? that God wants to use you. Not you and of yourself. You can't be like, hey, I, you know, I don't have it all put together, so I guess I'm gonna be used. But no, it's gotta be through God. It says they saw these as ordinary, uneducated men. They're just fishermen. There wasn't anything special with them. But they noticed they had been with Jesus. That's what changes everything. So they, they see these men teaching the temple. They throw them in prison. And I want you to know, you're going to face persecution when you stand up for Jesus. Thankfully, it's not like we see in other places in the world. Do you know there's people that are, are, man, they're facing crazy persecution. They're being thrown in jail. They're being murdered because of their faith. It's awful. Like you read about that stuff in the Bible, it's still happening in this world. People, I, I hear stories, people travel days in the heat just to go to a church service where they might be arrested at because they just want to worship Jesus. 
They might be killed because they go, but they're willing to make that sacrifice. And what do we do as Americans? Ah, it's too cold outside. I'm going to stay home. Man, I believe we need a little bit more fire in our hearts. That it doesn't matter what anyone says about us. So when you go into work and they start talking bad about you, when you go into work and people start saying, oh, there's that Jesus follower. There he is. There's, there's Lex. You know, she, uh, she believes in Jesus. She's crazy, right? I remember my first job, I worked at McDonald's, and, which was pretty awful, as awful as you'd expect. But people would talk about me behind my back that I was like this, this Jesus follower, and I never did anything weird. Some of us, we do weird stuff. That's, that's the problem. Uh, we, we act all crazy, and we, we weird people out with our Jesus following, and that we're not called to do that. But I want you to know this, that you're called to, to impact those around you. So, so you might tell so-and-so, they might be struggling with, Maybe they got a bad report from the doctor and you can say, you know, I know it's tough. Can I pray for you? Or, hey, I used to struggle with this. God set me free. I believe he can do the same for you. Or maybe just like something as simple as this. Hey, what are you doing this Sunday? Do you go to church for Easter? No, that's not really my thing. Oh, why don't you come out of my church? Like, it's like, we know it's not a lot of people's things, but we, we actually have a, a special service on Easter that's tailored towards people who is not their thing. And just say this, say, hey, I'll buy you Starbucks after. That usually covers over everything. But, but man, I believe that each and every one of us have opportunities at, at our place of work, at our school, everywhere we go. But we shy back. Why? Because we're in fear of what people are going to say. You know, the devil can't stop you from stepping out. What can? Fear. Uh, what are they going to say? What are they going to do? Man, what if it changes their life? We need to be okay with the fact people might talk bad about us. It's okay. Because it might be the thing that changes their life. I'm so thankful someone reached out to me and told me about Jesus. I'm so thankful that, uh, that growing up, when I was 10 years old, one of my mom's friends was bold enough to say, hey, why don't you come to my church? I know you guys are looking for a church. And man, I, I came out with my family. That's what changed my life forever. But if my mom's friend had not been bold enough to invite us out, who knows where I'd be? Someone was bold enough to invite you to church. Someone was bold enough to tell you about Jesus. And maybe it was just your parents. But they could have been like all like every other statistic in this country that don't raise their kids in church. Somebody was bold enough to tell you about Jesus. So I believe we're called to be that same, we're, we're called to preach the gospel at that same level of boldness. But the next point is this. Starting in verse 23, it says, as soon as they were freed, Peter and John returned to the other believers and told them uh, what the leading priests and elders had said. When they heard the report, all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God. I love it. They're in jail. They get set free. And what's the first thing they do? They go to their fellow believers. They go to their own company, the King James says. This doesn't just sound professional. They go to their own company. Everyone say that, company. It doesn't sound, sound Southern saying that. But it says they go to their own company. They go to their own fellow believers. And you know what they do? They pray. And I believe each and every one of us have those friends that we can go to Jesus or we can go to when we feel like we can't get to Jesus on our own. We feel so beat down by life and we just feel like things are so hard. Maybe you fell into temptation or you just feel like all this craziness is going on. I want you to know, we can go to Jesus or we can go to our friends. We should be able to go to our friends and they should be able to take us to Jesus. We should have four crazy friends, just like the, the paralyzed man who was taken to Jesus. You know, they tore the roof open, they lowered him down. He couldn't got to Jesus on his own, but you, you know what he had? Four crazy friends. They were willing to lift him up on the roof, tear off some, shilling, uh, some uh, shingles, and lower that guy down, and because of that, he was healed. We need friends we can turn to. And if you don't have friends that you can turn to, I want you to know, we got this amazing thing called connect groups. 2 Timothy 2.22 says, to pursue God with those that call on him with a pure heart. Come out to a connect group. You're not called to do life alone, but you're called to do life with other believers. Some of you have those friends, but some of you don't. And connect groups are such a great way to do that. So before we close tonight, we're going to put the QR code back up on the screen. I don't know if we can do it now. If we can, great. But if not, we'll wait to the end. Uh, I want you to sign up tonight because I believe connect groups can radically change your life. You're called to do life with other believers. It's not just about you by yourself pursuing Jesus, you, your dog, and your favorite Stephen Furtick teaching. Oh, that's great. But we're called to do life together with each other. Last but not least, I believe we need to step out boldly. We need to step out boldly. We'll close here. But Acts 4.29 says this. It says, it talks about their prayer. So they got together, they got together with their fellow believers and they prayed. And now, O Lord, hear their threats. This is them praying. 
Give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to preach the word of God with boldness. So if you guys have ever had questions about the Holy Spirit, come next week. Come next week because we're going to talk about what that means. We're going to talk about what that means. If you, if you have questions like, is that still for today? Like, like is that still God's will? Is God still moving in the, in the way on the planet? Um, what's the deal with speaking in tongues? We're going to talk about that next week. We're going to talk about that next week. So stay tuned. I encourage you, please, please be here. We're not going to share our opinion. We're not going to share what we think. We're going to share what God's word says. And we're going to prove to you in scripture uh, what God's word says about it. So if you're hungry for that, make sure you come out next week. But here's the deal. I believe we're called to step out boldly. And if you're here last week, what did we do? We had the stop sign. We had the stop sign. It's upside down. We had the stop sign. What do you do when you see a stop sign? You stop and you look both ways. You make sure no one's coming. This week, I got this. It says pedestrian cross crossing. And I want you to know, when you see this sign, what do you do? You stop and you make sure no one's walking in the way. Why? Because you might hit them. Right? So when you see this sign, it means to look for people, look for people that might be crossing. I believe we're called to do that in our life, that, that people might be crossing. Pedestrian, side note, pedestrian is such a cool word, right? Why don't we say that anymore? Like, I'm going to start using that in everyday talk. I mean, it's, when we see that sign, pedestrian crossing, watch out for pedestrians. We know, oh, there might be people. We need to be looking at that like that every single day. We need to be looking at the people around us saying, God, who have you called me to reach out to? We go to the gas station. God, who am I called to invite out? God, do you want me to talk to the person at the pump next to me? I'll invite them out to Easter. Now, you go to Walmart, talk to the cashier who probably hates her life, but it's okay because, man, you just, you smile on her and maybe God leads your leads you to pray for her. Maybe you're a giant eagle and God says, hey, go give that purse, pay for their groceries. If you're at Starbucks, pay for their, I mean, there's so many ways you can step out in faith, but who's walking through your path every day that you're called to reach out to? I was driving today. I was driving by my house. It was funny. I was actually going over my message when I was doing this and I came to this intersection. I came to this intersection and I looked over and there was, you know what was in the middle of the intersection? This car's coming every direction. A goose. And that goose is wobbling his way through. And I, I, I'm like stuck at this, this light and I'm waiting for it to turn green. But I'm like, man, if this thing turns green, his goose is cooked. <laughs> I'm pretty funny, aren't I? And so I'm just like, I'm like praying for this goose. I'm like, I'm, I think I was like praying in tongues for this goose. I don't know. But I'm just like praying for this goose. I'm like, God, protect this goose. Send your angels around this goose. I don't want to see this goose run over today. <laughs> but anyways, so this goose, he's crossing. Pedestrian crossing. She's like goose crossing. So this goose is crossing. Light turns green. Thankfully, he walks in my lane, okay? Why is that a good thing? Because I can stop. I don't think anyone else would have stopped. So I stop. There's all these cars behind me. It's getting crazy. Literally, it's me and this guy on this motorcycle next to me, okay? He doesn't go either. I start beeping my horn, trying to get, trying to get the goose to go back over because the other way is the highway. So I'm beeping my horn. The motorcycle man starts revving his engine, trying to scare the goose back over. We're both like working, to like teamwork to get this goose over. Thankfully, Goose looks over, ah. <laughs> waddles his way back to the, the park on the other side. He was fine. Man, it, isn't God's grace good on that goose? Come on. But if I didn't look up, I wouldn't have seen that goose in the middle of the road. And I probably would have hit that poor guy. And the last thing he would have heard, or the last thing I would have heard, would have been a honk. <laughs> Not a car horn either. So when you see a sign, pedestrian crossing or goose crossing, whatever, you know, you got to look up. Why? Because people's lives are in jeopardy. People's eternities are in jeopardy. There are people that God's put in your path that you're called to reach out to. You're called to share God's love with. Man, people's eternities are in the balance and it's our job to stand up. So many churches, so many people who love Jesus are praying prayers like this. Man, the world is getting bad. Jesus, come back. Jesus, come down. And I believe Jesus isn't saying, Jesus isn't saying, hey, I'm coming down. He's waiting. Why is he waiting? The Bible says he's waiting for the freshest fruit of the, fruit, the, freshest fruit of the earth. People, he's waiting for people to come to him. He, he doesn't want to come back and people are lost and they go to hell. And, and Jesus wants people to come to him before he comes back. But I believe churches, people are, are praying, Jesus, come down. And you know what Jesus is saying? 
Church, stand up. Man, church, stand up into who you're called to be. Church, rise up and reach those all around you. Reach those in your community. Reach those at your school, your workplace. Stand up. I believe God's gonna put someone in your heart right now that you're called to reach out to and it might be a little uncomfortable. It might be a little uncomfy. You might be uncomfy. I just said uncomfy. But get this, there might be someone in your life you're called to reach out to and it might not be comfortable. Greatness always happens outside your comfort zone. Who are you called to reach out to? Who are you called to invite to Easter? Uh, I don't know if I should invite them. That might be weird. No, who cares if it's really weird? That might be the one thing that changes their life. There's someone I believe that God's putting on each and every one of our hearts. Search your heart right now. And again, you might feel like you're not good enough. It doesn't matter. Peter said it wasn't our power or godliness. It was his. This might be your first time in church tonight. You know, God still wants to use you. Each and every one of us, I want us to search our heart and say, God, who do you want me to invite out to Easter? We, we decided each one of our, with these signs messages, we're gonna end it with a signs challenge. The challenge for tonight is who are you gonna bring out to Easter? I want each and every one of us to take that challenge to invite someone out to Easter. But it might not be comfortable I remember a while back, there was, uh, I was at the gym. I was, I was uh, in the locker room getting ready to come to church. And I was you know, just at the sink, and this guy's standing next to me. He's like washing his hands. He looks over at me, and he says this. He goes, wish I still had a nice set of hair like you, which that's just awkward to begin with. He was like an older guy. And I was like, thank you. He was just, it was, it was uncomfortable. And I felt like the Holy Spirit said to my heart, invite him out to church. And you know what I said? Me being the spiritual giant I am, I said, nope, that's weird. One man does not invite another man out to church in the bathroom. So I, I walk away. I'm like, have a nice day. Walk out. You know, I'm just like doing my thing. And I just felt like the Holy Spirit arrested me right there and said, no, you need to go back. You need to invite him out to church. So I'm just like, man, I got to go back. So I, I walk back in. He's washing his hands at the sink still. It's taking him a while. I don't know what's taking him so long. But anyways, I walk back in. Any amount of awkwardness that would have happened because I invited him out before was not amplified by 100 because now I've returned to the bathroom to talk to him again. So I just like walk up to the sink and I don't even know how to start a conversation. I literally pray. I say, God, if you want me to do this, you got to make it happen. I pray that immediately I get done praying that he looks over at me and says, so where do you work at? I look at him, I go, well, actually I work at Faith Family Church. And I start telling him about uh, just everything we're doing like in the high school and college and the U and United. And he says to me, he says this, he's like, that's awesome. I actually go to church there. At that point, I'm like, God, he goes to church here. Didn't you know that? You're making me look like an idiot. But I remember I, he looks at me at this point feeling like, not like I failed, but I'm like, God, why would you lead me to do this if he already went here? He looks at me and he says this. He says, wait a second. You said you work in the high school and college? And I go, yeah. He says, man, my son, he just started coming out to church. I didn't even know we had a high school ministry. I would love to get him involved. Would you want to meet him? He's actually here right now. And at first I had to get into work. I was running late. But then I remembered, wait, my job is to minister to young people. So I probably should stay here and minister to young people. So I stayed and I talked to him, told him all about the United, told him all about the U. He ended up going through starting point. But well, how did that happen? There's no way I would have known that he needed that. But I was in the right place at the right time without knowing it. And God used me. And I want you to know whether you're good enough, bad enough, God wants to use you that wherever you're at, God wants to use you. It might be uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable. I was really uncomfortable talking to another man in the restroom. But I, God wants to use you in sometimes uncomfortable ways. He wants to cause you to step outside your comfort zone. So who is far from God that's close to you? Again, the science challenge tonight is who are you gonna invite out to Easter? Will you take that challenge? We're gonna close in prayer. And we're gonna pray two things. We're gonna pray that if you take this challenge, God's gonna bring the right people in your path and he's gonna give you boldness. Don't pray this prayer if you're not serious because God will bring someone in your path. And I believe you're gonna have an amazing testimony. It's not all about you. Get your eyes off of you, but get your eyes on him and what he can do through you. So if you guys wanna take that challenge, I'm gonna ask you to pray this. Just pray along with me, mean it in your heart. 
Father God, right now we just come before you. And all of us, Father, we just are humbled by the fact you want to use us. And we choose to see people, we choose to see the opportunities you put in front of us. We don't view people as obstacles, but we choose to view them as the the children that you've called to come and know you. They might be far from you, but we know you still have a divine destiny for them. You still have a plan for their life. Jesus still died for them. So Father, right now, we say use us. Use us. Man, if that's you, if if you wanna make that commitment to to invite someone out this weekend, just under your breath, say, use me. Use me. Father, right now, we just surrender our lives to you. And we say, use us. We make a decision this week to step out in boldness, boldness, not caring what people think because the call on our life is greater than any of that. And the call on their life is greater than any of that. Father, we, we say as we step out, work through us in a mighty way. Give us the right words to say. And Father, we cannot wait to hear the testimonies of what you're gonna do through us. And we just thank you for all this in Jesus' name. Hey, what's up, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. And if you're out there and you say, hey, I don't know this Jesus you talked about. I don't know this God that you said loves me, has a plan for my life. Or maybe you did it one time and you walked away. I want you to know God is so in love with you that he's still pursuing you. He hasn't given up on you. People might give up on you, but God never gives up on you. And coming back to him can be so, so easy. In fact, the book of Romans says it like this. It says, if you believe in your heart that Jesus rose from the dead and you confess him as Lord, basically that just means, God, I give you my life. Jesus, you're my Lord, you're my boss, I give you everything. You say that, you pray that, man, the Bible says you can know, you can know you have eternal life. You know that you have heaven when you die and you can have heaven on earth while you live. Isn't that incredible? So if that's you tonight, I want you to pray this prayer with me. I want you to mean it in your heart, say it out of your mouth, but say this, say, Father God, I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for me. Jesus, I believe that you came to this earth, you went to the cross, and then you rose from the dead. And I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and as my Savior. And from this day forward, help me to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much. And if you prayed that prayer for the first time, we wanna hear from you. We don't wanna leave you where you're at, but we wanna encourage you on your journey of faith. So text the word, the you, to the number 94,000, and one of our team would love to connect with you and help you on this journey of faith. And also, if you tune in tonight for the first time, thank you so much. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, giving up part of your evening. So we wanna get a free gift into your hands just for hanging out with us. So text that number 94,000 again, text the word, the you, and we wanna get a free Starbucks gift card into your hands just for hanging out with us. Like what's better than that? A free latte on us. And also one more thing before we let you guys go, we have our connect groups that just launched a couple weeks ago. And guys, if you're not a part of our groups, uh, first of all, what are you doing? Second of all, you need to get there. They're so much fun. So they're gonna be running every single Monday night, 7 p.m. here at the church. And you can sign up by uh, scanning that QR code on your screen right now. You see that right below me? Yeah, scan that bad boy and uh, get signed up tonight. And I want you guys to know this. You don't have to sign up. You can just show up, but we want to encourage you to be a part of a group. Again, that's every Monday night here at the U at 7 p.m. So we love you guys. You guys have been incredible tonight and we'll see you next week.